Hello, I'm V.B. Price uh, with the New Mexico Mercury. I'm here today with my old friend Don Hancock, who's the director of the Nuclear Waste Program at the Southwest Research and Information Center in Albuquerque. He's been working on matters concerning nuclear waste and the waste isolation pilot project in Carlsbad since 1976. I consider him to be the premier expert in the state. Uh, Don, we have an interesting situation at Hanford, Washington, uh, where we have some, what, uh, 53 million gallons of radioactive liquid, and suddenly the DOE has zeroed in on WHIP as the preferred alternative to move about 3.2 million of those gallons uh, in an altered state uh, to WHIP. Now, why now, and what are the basic problems with this idea? The why now is basically politics. Washington elected Washington State elected a new governor in November, Jay Inslee, who took office in January. And one of the things he was told very early on in his term is that tanks at Hanford who that had leaked before, but the Department of Energy has said since 2004 they weren't leaking anymore. Yeah. They they had to admit, the Hanford folks had to admit to him that they have a number of tanks that are leaking again. Oh so he, of course, not surprisingly, was not at all happy about that, mm -hmm. um, and he shouldn't have been, mm -hmm. um, and he wants something to be done. And there actually was some national publicity about it. Uh, uh, so the Department of Energy then needs to, in their usual way of doing things, is to say that they have a solution for the problem quickly, uh -huh. even though they don't have a quick solution for the problem. <laughs> um, but if you can maintain you have a quick solution, I think the hope was people will stop paying attention. You know, it's a short-term media story, and the governor will... Right. be interested in other things and nobody will pay attention. Well, of course, that's not true. Hanford is a very big deal in Washington State and in Oregon. Contamination from Hanford can go into the Columbia River, right. um, and so therefore Oregon's very concerned about it because the you know, the Columbia is right there as well. So, so there's a lot of concern, as there should be, about contamination at Hanford. The solution to the problem, though, isn't to say, let's ship it to WIP. Um, this is an old idea that's already been rejected. Uh -huh. In 2003, the Department of Energy was trying to figure out whether they could do something with some of this waste, and they came up with this great idea of renaming it. It's high-level waste, and it's been high-level waste, but if we can rename some of it, that'll help us. Um, in two ways, they thought. One is they'd be able to leave some of it in the tanks mm -hmm. at Hanford, at Savannah Riverside in South Carolina, at the Idaho National Lab. So if we can leave some of it in the tanks, gee, wouldn't what that'd be a great idea? It would save money, you know, save work. You know, we could say we already had some of the problems solved. And this is right? all verbal chicanery. This is all this is verbal chicanery. Well, of course, at the time, if you remember, two thousand three in New Mexico is when we had a governor. Bill Richardson, who was the former Secretary of Energy, right. who knows a lot about this stuff, right. and his reaction to, I don't care what you call it, but it's high-level waste and it can't come to New Mexico, is what he said. And it can't, um, you can't get here because of the 1992 law, which forbids it. Correct. Um, so we have, we have a clear prohibition in federal law to high-level waste at WIP. What happened with Governor Richardson, though, is he said, you know, well, if you guys are going to play games like this, well, we can do some things, too. We can put some provisions in our state permit that are going to, you know, create additional barriers. Okay, so in 2004, the Department of Energy, no less, the WIP site proposed changes in the WIP permit to explicitly prohibit waste that had been handled as high-level waste, managed as high-level waste, that was the term, from coming to WIP unless there was what was called a Class three modification. Now, Class three in this case means public hearings. Uh, okay. okay? Yeah. 
So DOE said, okay, you know, we understand you don't like this idea of us renaming waste and sending it to WIP. So we don't really plan to do that. But if we would change our mind in the future and want to do it, we would have to go through this extensive process of telling the state and trying to justify to the state why we were doing it. We'd have to go through a public hearing process. Once so again, like, anybody and everybody, you know, would be able to participate, et cetera. So, so that was 2004. So since 2004, um, in addition to the federal laws that say no to high-level waste, the New Mexico state government, through the permit, right, has yeah. said, no, explicitly, you can't bring this stuff. And if you ever try to, before you could, you have to justify it technically and legally. We have to go through a public hearing process. By the way, part of what can happen with the public hearing process is you, the OE may not get what they want. Yeah. And if they do, citizens, people who are involved, have the ability to take that decision to court. So it, it makes yeah. the decision very far removed from just the Department yeah. of Energy saying, we'll call waste transuranic so it can come to WIP rename it from high-level waste to transuranic waste and say everything is fine. Okay, so eight years later suddenly now, we have, we have the DOE almost like magic uh, uh, defining a mere three million point two gallons of this waste um, as being ready to go to WHIP and WHIP being a preferred alternative for it. First thing to remember is they'd previously said the opposite. Right. In fact, they had specifically said in after the draft of this environmental impact statement right. that discussed the alternatives, they had explicitly said WHIP was not considered. They weren't going to send any of this to really? WIP. Really? So they, they, they said that in writing wow. in the Federal Register. They said, so for the, that was in 2009. So, the, it, okay. so people have said, okay, that's not an option. We don't need to worry about that anymore. So the reason that DOE had to reverse themselves is because they'd said no. So now they've had to reverse themselves and say, oh, well, hmm, guess what? We were changing our mind. So they, they want to think that, again, this is the idea that, we can divert people's attention. The, the waste in these tanks, these so up to 20 tanks that they think have these 3 million gallons that they could ship to WIP, is less than 6% of the total amount that's there. Yeah. So it doesn't solve the problem. As I say, they themselves had said they were going to handle it the same way they're going to handle the other 50 million plus gallons. Right. And so, again, this is part of this issue of can we say we're going to send it to some place? And New Mexico and Governor Richardson said no eight years ago, but maybe they'll forget about it. Maybe things are dip maybe the politics of New Mexico are different, and we can send it. Maybe people will forget, and so they'll they'll try to do it again. It won't work as as a technical matter. It won't work as a legal matter. It won't work, and as a practical matter, it won't work. It won't work as a technical matter because this is much more radioactive right. than the stuff that comes to WIP. So therefore, that that creates a real problem. And so in theory, they haven't clearly said this because, of course, their environmental impact statement didn't go into changing the stuff so it could come to WIP. But right. in theory, if they were going to do that, they, were, they would do a process of stripping out the cesium and the strontium from this waste to make it less radioactive before they would ship it to WIP. But technically, they've never done that. Uh -huh. So that's that's not what they were going to do. The idea is to put it into glass, right, right, to the facility, it. And, and vitrify it. Um, so they haven't done what they in presumably technically would have to do for WIP. So again, that's an additional cost, additional delay, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. We've discussed they can't do it legally because it's against the law. And as a practical matter, it doesn't work either. It's not just that WIP isn't legally allowed to take high-level waste. It really can't handle that kind of higher radioactive material. Okay, let me ask you about this. What makes high-level waste in WIP oil and water? Why won't they work together? The facility is not set up for high-level waste. Again, it uh -huh. was supposed to be for transuranic waste, which it has plutonium-contaminated material, right. so it's dangerous for a long time, but most <clears throat> of the waste isn't highly radioactive. You know, it, Most of the waste, you can walk right up to the drums and not get a significant amount of radioactivity, etc. So 
the the facility isn't really set up for it and the what's called the remote handled waste bay for higher activity waste is 1970s technology uh-huh. Um, oh, cool. which, which, which isn't good for, again, <laughs> no. highly radioactive waste. No. Um, and so you would have, you know, from our standpoint, uh, it would be extremely dangerous for the workers to right. be a, a, around it, etc. Of course, transportation of more ra- highly radioactive materials creates more of a danger in terms of transportation as well. Um, so the, not only the, the Hanford would have to develop new facilities to, to prepare this waste to come to WIP, but WIP would undoubtedly need to, whether they do it or not is a different question, but would need to change some of its facilities. So, so none of that makes any sense. The broader issue of the WIP site, the site itself, is surrounded by oil and gas, operating oil and gas wells. Mm-hmm. It's underlain by proven oil and gas reserves. It's half a mile down. It's right? half a mile down, so you say, oh, well, this is perfectly good, except the, the oil and gas is lower than, the, than where the waste is, is below the waste area. So in the future, if people are drilling in, why you have two bad things happening. One is the waste can come out. I mean, it, oh. it, and, and two, if it's hotter waste, the hotter waste makes the salt move around more, and and okay, it this, doesn't. The salt doesn't behave as well as what it's supposed to do of so slowly creeping in, and and encapsulating the waste. Well, let so, me just be clear about this. And this is half a mile down. Mm-hmm. It's in the salt bed, right? Mm-hmm, right. There's huge what football sized. Uh, a field. Uh, the rooms. The rooms that they put the waste in. Uh, people can think of them as football field. 13 feet high, wow. rooms that have been mined out of the salt. Um, wa- the, the hotter waste, the remote handled waste, is put into the wall of the room mm. so that you get extra salt. It's in better containers, but also you get extra salt shielding. And then after that, you bring the other waste, the contact handled waste, in and stack it in the floor of the rooms. Okay. Um, so that's, you know, I mean, that's the idea of, of how it works. And over time, the salt is supposed to move in and seal up those, seal up the rooms and the containers, et cetera, et cetera. But With there isn't high level waste now. But there's no high level waste. Oh, okay. And the heat, the physical heat, the higher radioactivity has more thermal heat as well, that causes the salt to move much quicker and much faster. And the other thing it does, the, the, why is the salt there? The salt is there because it used to be an ocean. Right. Okay? Right, right, uh, right. And while we like to talk about the salt being dry, there are still water molecules in the salt. And again, when you heat up the salt, you start breaking down the, the crystals, right. you oh, can get right. water. Heat and water create steam. Again, that's something you don't want. That, again, will move the waste around. Right. So, so the, the world concluded in the 70s. Um, independent scientists and in most countries of the world concluded in the 70s that salt might be okay for waste like the waste that's coming to whip that isn't so highly radioactive and isn't so thermally hot but you shouldn't use salt for higher, higher uh, thermally hot waste. So that's why other countries that are looking at um, geologic disposal, uh, rather than looking at salt, are looking at other, other rock types, granites or shales, things that don't have the same kind of, 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 of heat problem. So, so, you know, the high-level waste doesn't work as a practical matter at WIP in addition to it doesn't really work uh, in terms of a, from a legal standpoint. So let's, let's talk about the legal aspects of it. Obviously, the law was constructed around scientific information, which concluded exactly what you said, that these uh, that, um, salt mines, if you will, are not, are not adequate for, uh, for high-level waste. And so the law... Uh, um, uh, specifically states, right, that there is not to be any of that kind of waste. So if this is all a kind of a political feint for the state of Washington, I don't know if that's completely, totally what it is, but I, I presume it's most of it, why would they, why would they do this? 
is it a kind of madness? Is it a sort of a, a political game? So the law not only was based on the technical issues, but it was also based on promises to the state of New Mexico. The, the reason that the, the governors, the congressional delegation of New Mexico in the late 80s and early 90s leading up to the 1992 law were willing to support this is because of that prohibition on high-level waste. And lots of people in the state of New Mexico who were around in the 70s and 80s with the whole discussion heard many Department of Energy officials on numerous occasions say, no high-level waste. Me too. Come, I heard come, it myself. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so there are promises to, to do this. So the law is based both on science, but it's also based on promises made. So... One of the things that's happened, though, in the last few years that some people think might have changed some of these dynamics, and maybe people forget the promises or maybe we can change the promises, there have always been some people in southeastern New Mexico who were okay with bringing any kind of waste right. to WIP. And the hope is, and, and since the President Obama killed the Yucca Mountain project in Nevada, which was where high-level waste spent fuel was supposed to go. We now have, again, only one place, one hole in the ground with waste in it, which is WIP. So, you know, <laughs> maybe we can, if we have to have a quick-fix problem, there is no quick-fix solution if you're going to put waste in the ground except at WIP. Number one. Number two, there's this idea of, well, the reason Yucca Mountain failed, Yucca Mountain had a lot of technical flaws to it, but, but what uh, totally killed it was the strong opposition reiterated over and over and over again by the citizens of Nevada, the Nevada congressional delegation. So now the thought is, well, if we find a willing volunteer... Oh, little volunteer, no. maybe it's okay. And there are people in southeastern New Mexico that are saying, we will volunteer. Right. And there are people in the Department of Energy and other places that say, oh, well, if we have a volunteer, why then, you know, why not send the waste there? So on the one hand, it's a political thing to satisfy, in theory, we don't think it will, but in in theory, to satisfy people in Washington that DOE is solving this leaking high-level waste problem. But it also is the hope that maybe the situation in New Mexico is now different, and people would say, oh, the promises, that's fine, you can change the law, etc., which is why we think it's important in these next few weeks and months, as there is more of discussion about what's going to happen with the state permit, prohibits this kind of waste without public hearings and with what may be happening in Congress, yeah. that people in New Mexico need to say, well, wait a minute, a promise is a promise. The law is the law. We don't want the law changed. We don't want the promises broken. WIP should fulfill its mission, and let's not bring in other stuff that we don't want, never agreed to, and shouldn't have. So in the meantime, Hanford isn't just isn't just sitting on its hands. It spent, what, $12 billion on uh, the vitrification plant. They're planning to move this awful liquid stuff to, to uh, double-layered um, containers. Or, I mean, so indeed, when the journal said that, that this, that WIP might be the only option, that was really a bunch of baloney. There is a need to do something at Hanford. Right. What we my organization, national organizations, organizations in Washington State have been saying, uh, and we've said it in writing to the Department of Energy, is what should be done is additional double-shelled tanks at Hanford should be built, and the waste from the leaky tanks should be put into those containers as soon as possible. The additional tanks are going to be needed to for to stage the liquids and the sludges before it can go into the glassification plant. So they need it anyway, and that's the way to 
quickly. That's something that can be done quickly. It doesn't require building new facilities at Hanford to handle this stuff. You, they've already gotten some. One of the reasons they thought a lot of the tanks weren't leaking anymore is they'd gotten some of the waste out of them above the leak lines before and put it into other tanks, double-shelled tanks. Well, that's what they need to do. They could do that quickly. And, and both the governor, the former and current governors of Washington state, the current governor of Oregon, as well as other people, have been saying for a while to DOE, you need to have some new tanks. Right. So, so that's what needs to happen. And that can be done quickly. It will address the issue of the leaking until the, the vitrification plant hopefully will eventually operate. Unfortunately, the vitrification plant is way over budget and way behind schedule, and it is a complicated process. I mean, we're talking about waste that is highly radioactive, it's got lots of chemicals in it, um, so it's very difficult to do what needs to be done with the, with the waste treatment plant. Um, also, unfortunately, there are clear documentation that there have been the contractors who are doing it in some cases have been more interested in making money than making the process work. There's even a current example of falsification of records. There are a number of whistleblowers oh, right. with, the, with the treatment plant. I mean, one of the buildings for the treatment plant has actually been put on hold because whistleblowers identified some major flaws in the construction that wasn't being done correctly, so now they have to go back. Oh, and so, so Hanford is a very big, it's a technically big problem. It's therefore a political problem, but it's also a problem in terms of how the, the whole project has been managed. Um, but again, the solution to the Hanford problems has to be found at Hanford in terms of taking care of the short-term problems, getting double-shelled tanks, eventually getting a vitrification process that works so that all the more than 50 million gallons of waste can be put in a solid form so there won't be a need to worry about leaking anymore. That's what right? have to, to and to and, and, and eventually, obviously, we need to have um, other long-term disposal sites, not only for this kind of high-level waste that Hanford has and Savannah River site has and Idaho has, but we have 104 commercial nuclear power plants in this country that are generating every day spent nuclear fuel, about 70,000 metric tons of it, that are eventually going to need some place to go to. But it's going to take a while to figure out where to put it and how to do all the technical things that are going to be needed for that to happen. So that's why both at the power plants and at places like Hanford, we need to get the waste in stable forms so it's not leaking, it's not getting into the soil and the groundwater, which it has at Hanford, and we don't want it to do anymore. Um, and it has at Savannah River site so that we get to the situation where waste is contained where it is, it can safely stay at those places for the decades that it's going to need to until we figure out how to come up with permanent disposal sites. Um, so those kinds of things can and should be done. They are much better short-term solutions than saying, you know, we're going to treat it at Hanford and ship it to WIP or someplace else if they could come up with someplace else. Um, so the, this recent proposal doesn't really make any sense at all. Uh, and a lot of people, as I say, I think people in New Mexico can say no to it, not saying we don't care what happens at Hanford. We right. do care what Certainly. happens at Hanford. And yeah. the right thing to happen at Hanford is to spend money to a little bit of money to have the tanks to get the waste out of the single-shelled leaky tanks into double-shelled tanks so that the Hanford situation is better taken care of without foisting on people along the transportation routes and on New Mexico right. yeah, um, stuff that really shouldn't be coming here anyway. If New Mexico uh, was to welcome this idea of a preferred alternative at, and whip, what would the local politics be like? Would the governor have to have to write off on it? Would the legis would the legis legislature have to write off on it? Would uh, uh, the people in Carlsbad uh, certainly 
uh, couldn't be the only people to, to impose this kind of thing on the rest of us. Well, a number of things have to happen. The, f the first thing, of course, from my standpoint, is the people of the state, in some way or another, are going to have to change their minds. Right. Because all through the process of the development of WIP in the 70s and 80s and 90s, and public opinion polling that was done, et cetera, always showed 70% or more of the population said no way to this. So, 70%? Wow. So, and I, from anecdotally, I have no reason to believe that we still don't have that kind of high level of opposition to this high kind of idea. So, uh, um, among the things that would have to happen, from my standpoint, an important thing would have to happen is that people would have to change their mind. I don't think that's going to happen. In the short run, the Department of Energy wants to proceed with eliminating this provision of the state permit that we've talked right, about that prohibits. Right, yeah. and, and they want to do it. Interestingly, DOE wants to, to change the permit without a public hearing. So they not only want to take our right to a public hearing down the line away, they don't even want to have a public <laughs> hearing on the attempt to take it away. Jeez. Um, so the, <clears throat> the people of the state uh, get a chance to say no way to that, not in a hearing, but through written comments. The Environment Department, which of course is part of the administration, then has to make a decision. So some people will take if the Environment Department says okay to this, even though that's not explicitly the governor doing it, it right. would be the, her appointed secretary of the Environment Department, Dave right. Martin, right. doing that. But some people would take that as, well, maybe the governor is mm, interested or susceptible or, right. or, or whatever to, to, to this idea. Um, uh, the legislature isn't specifically involved. Um, federal law preempts states from regulating this kind of radioactive material oh, okay. except through the permitting process okay. we're talking about. So the legislature doesn't really have to do anything. Obviously, again, the legislature, if they wanted to, could weigh in in terms of what they think about it. Right. Uh, but as I say, ultimately, um, there would be legal challenges uh, to this idea of changing things. Ultimately, Congress has to get involved. So there would be a lot of people that would have to be involved. One of the lessons of New Mexico in the 70s and 80s um, was that, because remember the original decision, the original, original 1979 decision yeah. in Congress to do WIP, nobody really got consulted. Nell Price, who at the time was the chairman of the House Armed Services oh, Committee just went to the floor right. with a bill that said not to use WIP, and on the floor of the House changed it to say let's use WIP, wow. and and so there wasn't you know any agreement at the time. Yeah. Well, it took 13 years to get to the 1992 law to kind of sort out how, how all of that was going to work, but um, the the lesson of that time, in my experience, and the lesson of the Nevada experience with Yucca Mountain mm -hmm. is. These take any nuclear waste facility takes a long, long time. Right. <laughs> so if people are not going to support it, um, it may take a while. It took Nevada from 1987 25 years wow. to kill the Yucca Mountain idea. Mm -hmm. It took people in New Mexico from when WIP was first proposed in 1972. It was 20 years from when WIP was first proposed until the 1992 law and 27 years from wow. the proposal in 1972 to 1999 when waste finally came. Mm -hmm. so, so there are lots of administrations, lots of people in the legislature, lots of people in Congress that would have to buy in before any kind of a change could really happen. But that's why, rather than going through 20 or 25 years of debating about whether we want to do it or not mm -hmm. in New Mexico, I think it's an important time now for people now to say to the Department of Energy, to the Environment Department, to the governor, to the congressional delegation, this is a non-starter. Don't even go there. And it can be stopped very quickly. What the Department of Energy announced as their preferred alternative, they haven't finally decided it is. There's a separate decision called a record of decision oh, that right. DOE has to do. They haven't done that yet. And in fact, 
the Department of Energy could still go back to its long-held position, which is not to ship it to WIP, and they could announce, you know, um, any time uh, from April 11th on, they could decide, well, we're going to go back to, no, we're not going to send any of this Hanford waste to WIP. And that could be the end of it very quickly. Let's really hope that happens. Don, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. I appreciated talking with you. It's just been wonderful.